to just set this variable's name here with let's say 55 10 just to indicate that the variable is a normally distributed variable with a mean of 55 and the standard deviation of 10. Let me hit OK on that. Hit OK. That's generated that new variable for me. Let's draw its graph. So I'm going to go to graphs, legacy dialogues, histograms. Okay. Uh, get rid of that. I don't want variable over here. The, the, sorry, I don't want norm 0 to 1. I want norm 55 10. And I'm going to hit OK on this. And there's that particular distribution. And you can see that that distribution seems to be centered in around 55. Double click on it. Let's put a normal distribution on top of it. There we go. And we have once again generated a normally distributed data set with different shape parameters, with different mean, different standard deviation. And let's say we wanted to generate an F distribution or a set of random numbers that were selected from an F distribution where we define, you know, in previous videos you know that we've used the F distribution as a test statistic uh, to calculate, let's say, if there's a difference between variances uh, and it's parameterized by two numbers, by two sets of degrees of freedom. Uh, so let's do this, let's go transfer transform compute uh, let's create the variable I'm just going to call the variable f and I'm going to say 10 let's say 5 okay so I'm generating I'm generating a set of random variables random numbers from a NEF distribution uh, whose numerator has 10 degrees of freedom uh, and whose denominator has 5 degrees of freedom okay so in this case we have our F distribution here is our F distribution here there we go, and I'm going to specify 10, 10, 5, okay, and I'm going to hit OK, and that creates a new variable for us. If I can find it here somewhere, that has created a new variable. Here it is here, okay, and uh, let's graph it. So I'm going to go to graphs, legacy dialogues, histogram, and uh, I'm going to remove norm 55, 10 from my variable. I'm going to put in F10, 5, uh, which is the random numbers that we generated for the F distribution with 10. 10 degrees of freedom and 5 degrees of freedom in the numerator and denominator respectively. And I'm going to hit OK on that. And there's our graph there. Okay, so you can see this positive positive skewness in relation to this particular distribution. Okay, let's do one more from an F distribution. Let's say 10, 10. Okay, let's say it's coming from 10 degrees of freedom and 10 degrees of freedom in the numerator and the denominator. So let's hit OK on that. Uh, we have generated them numbers. Let's graph them. So we're going to go to legacy dialogues, histogram. We're going to just put in the distribution F1010. That's what we want to graph. And you can see there's our there's our F distribution again. Okay, and we can generate these all day long. Like we could we could generate stuff, let's say, from a chi squared distribution, an exponential distribution, or anything from let's say the gamma family of distributions. Uh, if we want to, I could go transform, let's say compute variable, uh, let's say gamma, gamma. Oh, let me just give it a name here. Let's say gamma. Uh, let's say the we have let's say our parameters in relation to our gamma distribution. We have a shape parameter. Let me just find gamma here. See, we have a shape parameter and a scale parameter. Let's just say gamma one one for argument's sake. Okay. Let me call that function here. Okay. So we have gamma one 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 one. Let's hit OK on that. Okay. And. Let's go to graphs and let's graph that function. Okay, so we're going to go to histograms, and here is our gamma one one. Okay, or should I say variable uh, rather than function? So I'm going to hit OK on that, and there's our distribution. Now we can change the shape parameters. Uh, uh, so don't forget we have this shape and scale parameter. Let's do it again. Transform compute variable. And let's say we go gamma 110 for argument's sake. The effect here is going to be to shift. It's, it's going to have an effect of shifting values. It's going to it's it's going to get because we're only changing the scale parameter here. Uh, we're increasing it. The effect is it's going to shift the curve. It's going to shift it to the left. So it's going to compact it to the left. There'll be more observations in the in the lower region of the curve here. That's really what's happening here with the scale parameter. Okay, so if I hit OK on that, that generates the gamma function for us. Let's have a look at this. Graphs, legacy dialogues, histogram, uh, gamma 10 is what we want to plot here. Gamma 110, there we go. And we hit OK, and here's our distribution. Let me just fix the scale on this so you can actually see it relative to the other one. So I'm just going to go in, double click on the scale, uh, set the scale maximum to be 10. Okay, set scale maximum, apply that. And close that down 
and actually you can see what's actually had to happen with our gamma function is that here's the gamma function here and it's still scaled to 400 up here and it's out to 10 you can see there's a reasonable distribution it's albeit you can see it's 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 negatively skewed going down in the positive direction but there's a reasonable distribution here less than four and you can actually see what's had to happen and here is that all of the observations are after getting pushed to the left okay and that's one of the characteristics here now of that particular scale parameter for the gamma function uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is this is that when we go into transform compute variable there are many different distributions that we can generate random variables from okay or random random numbers from uh, so you know depending on what what you're trying to model and uh, what behavior you're trying to model there's lots of distributions that will help you in relation to modeling a particular type of behavior yeah okay? uh, this particular this particular video is really talking about uh, where particular distributions are used okay? uh, I mean there's lots of examples from a financial perspective where particular distributions are used from a queuing theory perspective and so on and so forth uh, but this video is just how do we generate random numbers okay? I've just chosen uh, one particular popular one which was the normal distribution we did a few variants of it uh, we looked at the F distribution and we also looked at the gamma uh, distribution here uh, but as I said there's many things you could choose from here okay a uh, uniform distribution you could choose where well, the, the, the Y ball uh, and so on and so forth the Laplace is there as well there's many that we can choose from okay guys once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the mathematics development and support service at the National College of Ireland uh, I hope that this video was in some way uh, helpful and more importantly uh, well I hope it was intuitive and more importantly I hope that was helpful thanks for watching okay bye bye